Iris Fontbonne Gonzalez was born in 1942. She's a billionaire businesswoman from Chile who owns a media company and is a media mogul. According to Forbes, she's the richest person in Chile with an estimated net worth of around $16.6 million, the third richest in Latin America and the ninth richest woman worldwide in 2022. However, most of her wealth comes from the inheritance she got from her late husband, Andronico Luxig Abaroa, who owned Antofagasta PLC. She first met Andronico Luxig, who was 15 years older, when she was 17. By the time she was 20, they were already married. But the question is, was Antofagasta her breakthrough? How did she become the wealthiest woman in Chile? It's without a doubt she was able to be a billionaire by getting married to Andronico Luxig. The guy who founded one of the largest copper mining corporations in the world, Antofagasta. Fontbonner and Luxig had three kids, some of whom worked for the business. The couple drew considerable media attention when they got married. But how did Andronico Luxig establish his businesses and wealth? Luxig Aboroa, the son of a general shop owner, emigrated to Croatia in the early 1900s. Although he was assigned to study in Paris, he didn't stay long at the university. In 1950, Andronico Aboroa started a Ford dealership, which was growing due to recently developed copper mines. He eventually bought a small mining company, which he later sold to Japanese investors for a large profit. He founded a mining and fishing company, using the money he received as a windfall. Later, he relocated to Santiago, Chile's capital, where he played the stock market and eventually took over a pasta manufacturer and a metal fabrication business. Unfortunately, in the 1970s, Andronico Aboroa's companies had hardships under military rule, but he emerged from that period in the 1980s, flush with cash and with little debt. He started buying up faltering businesses, including the biggest bank and brewer in the nation. So, how did he succeed? When did he get his breakthrough? Investments in the bordering nations suffered during the 1990s economic crisis. This forced the corporate empire of Andronico Aboroa to be divided into two groups. That is, the Antofaga State PLC, which manages the railroad and mining activities, and the Quinenco, which is in charge of finance and manufacturing. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2005, leaving his business to his wife and children, Jean-Paul, Andronico, and Guillermo, who acted as the CEO. Basically, Luxig founded one of the world's most well-known copper mining companies. He also invested in the mining, banking, industrial, and beverage sectors. At the time of his death, Luxig was the 132nd richest man in the world, the richest man in Chile, and the fourth richest man in Latin America. Bon Bona has now worked with her kids to run the business for years. She remains in Chile to run her business ventures. In 2013, Guillermo passed away from lung cancer, and Nicolás took over as CEO of the business. He's held that position for the last two years. As we all know, money can be inherited easily, but growing it is quite challenging. So, how do you think Von Bonner has grown the family business? The rise of the family's business has resulted in Banco de Chile becoming the second largest commercial bank in the nation. As a full-service bank, its activities include commercial loans, foreign exchange, capital market services, cash management, and non-credit services such as payroll and payment. A wide variety of treasury and risk management products are offered to corporate customers. Moreover, Banco de Chile provides a range of services through its subsidiaries, including factoring, mutual fund management, securities and insurance brokerage, and financial advising services. There is also CCU. It has become the biggest brewer in the world, the largest brewer in Chile, the second largest bottler of soft drinks there, the second largest exporter of wine there, and the third largest brewer in Argentina. And that's not all. Guess what? The family also owns Adriatic luxury hotels in Dubrovnik. And by the way, Von Bonner has also purchased a 70% share of Chilean television network Canal 13. It's a free-to-air television network which broadcasted the 1962 FIFA World Cup that was held in Chile. Surprisingly, despite the firm's expansion, Von Bonner's net worth has decreased. As reported by Bloomberg, the pandemic's detrimental impacts on the Chilean economy reduced Von Bonner's wealth by almost $2.6 billion in the first few months of the health catastrophe. 
Interestingly, rumors confirmed that Iris von Bonner is a philanthropist. Could this be true? Despite maintaining a high level of anonymity, von Bonner spends time in Chile, London, and Liechtenstein. In Chile, she's well recognized for her altruism and her riches, and the family has consistently supported the country's annual Teleton campaign since 2010. In the 2012 edition of the ceremony, according to media accounts, von Bonner presented a cash envelope containing the equivalent of $2.3 million in Chilean pesos. Moreover, in 2014, she promised to fund the building of a school in her hometown of Antofagasta. The family also has a charity organization, Fundación Familia Luxic. It serves as the umbrella organization for six other nonprofit organizations, the first of which, Fundación Luxic, was established in the early 21st century. The foundation funds programs in education, health, sports, and entrepreneurship. The family also contributed to Chile's reconstruction efforts after the 2010 and 2015 earthquakes and rebuilding a school after the 2017 forest fires. On the other hand, she enjoys her riches while living a simple life. Her lavish lifestyle is not that well known, but we can surely have a guess. She surely flies first class, and which billionaire doesn't have a car? Well, she can definitely afford anything she likes. She might have inherited most of her net worth, but what counts is that she expanded the company her late husband left her. Anyway, what do you like the most about her? Does she inspire you?